Hello guys, welcome to another FU Money. Today is Monday, so we close the week and we are about to close the month tomorrow. Uh, before that, just a few words about the uh, big um, war. I don't know if I should call it a war or not, or just a small quarrel on Twitter about what uh, Benjamin Cohen has been saying uh, regarding this possibility of a short-term, short-term bear market. And I've been contesting that idea, saying that this is still not a bear market, but we will go into that later when I show you the daily chart with only two lines, two trend lines on that chart. And I will show you guys what my idea is about all this. So today, as I said, it's Monday. It's a nice day for me because this morning I signed uh, another deed. I sold another property and guess where all that money is going into. So you guessed it right. I guess you guessed it right. You guys should know it. But let's go to the screen share and let's take a quick look at the charts today. Price to time model, price to time model. So it continues. It continues to be exactly at the same level as the um, yellow uh, cycle, which corresponds to the 2017 bull cycle. So we are exactly at the same level as before. We closed the week um, just last night and now we have the 20 week SMA turning back down, which for me, uh, I don't like it. I would prefer the price action to go above the 20 week SMA again and make it at least go sideways, um, not pointing down for sure. I would not like that. We also see already the curve. We start to see a curve on the 200 SMA, 200 period, in this case, weeks SMA. Uh, I also don't like that. I would much more prefer this uh, 200 SMA to continue going up for some more time. And at least we should keep the price action, if not inside this area in between the threshold orange line of the rectangle and the yellow um, bull cycle of 2017, at least trying to go sideways with this yellow candle pattern to the top, which I believe will come soon enough. I'm not saying uh, this is will be tomorrow, but we are not as delayed as some people say. And we are also we are also not on a bear market yet. So this is what I want you guys, at least this is my opinion. Uh, I've been called so many things because of that, because uh, if you disagree with Benjamin Cohen because he has 450,000 subs on YouTube, you must be stupid because you only have uh, like close to 1000 and stuff like that. And you, ch you started your channel just a few months ago in March. Well, guys, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but before Benjamin Cohen was here, I was here before him and I was already in the in this in the space, although I didn't have a channel because I decided that I would only create a channel to discuss the markets this year. It doesn't mean I was not here before. So I started to investigate this in 2015. So I'm sorry for that, but I don't have three months experience in this market. I have many years already of experience in this market. So for those uh, prima donnas that even uh, uh, discuss about me uh, posting in, in English when I go to the Portuguese groups on Facebook. Well, they should know already that I post the same and I, I, I copy paste all my tweets, uh, which are, of course, in English because I move in the space internationally. And that's why I write in English so that I can be understood by everyone. And if I copy paste my posts on Twitter just to share my ideas on uh, Portuguese groups on Facebook. That's because I don't want to have to write it again in Portuguese. It would be a lot of trouble and a lot of work just to translate all the tweets I, I post every day. And it would be like dozens of them every day having to translate it to a different language, which of course it's my mother language, but in any case, it would be double work to do it. So if you guys just don't realize that, don't understand that, that it's much easier for me just to copy paste and share my ideas with you guys, because I want to share my ideas, then something is screwed up. Something I don't understand where people are going saying that I, I try to be so arrogant that I don't even speak Portuguese anymore. That is completely stupid, completely stupid. But anyway, 
I don't want to share all the trolls with you guys here on my video. So uh, we are still on time here for the price to time model. We are again turning back up on the RSI and I was just looking at it now because I was doing so much stuff this morning. I just got home so I didn't have a lot of time to prepare for the video but however you know you guys know already I like to do th uh, stuff in real time so my analysis just comes out when I look at the charts immediately. I don't need to prepare anything uh, so special. Uh, so here it is, the RSI is again turning back up with this small recovery we had since this morning. I was in fact looking at the charts just to check the price. I was not preparing anything for the video of today. But uh, the RSI is in the good, uh, uh, it's looking good. So for me, this is not a bear market. So let's go to the MRI charts. We are on the four hour. Let me take this to the weekly chart. So the weekly chart is now on a warning. And this is very, very good because the warning is for the MRI bottom. So according to Tone Vase's MRI indicator, we, this week, which is now turning green, so we had we closed the week last night on the green, although this was a shooting star, but this was on the green, so it kind of, um, you know, resets itself, not being such a bad sign. This week just started, and this is now an MRI bottom warning. You guys can see the orange um, arrow there. So this means we are on a red eight of nine and probably if not this week already, as I said in my previous video, if not this week, probably the next week will become the reversal of the price action unless something extraordinary happens or we hit really heavy resistance around these levels of the trend line here and then something could go back to the scenario that I gave uh, first 30 to 40 percent probabilities of occurring and recently during the weekend I changed that to 25 percent uh, probabilities of occurring which is a new low being supported by the 50 week SMA which is the yellow line here around the 20 29k so these are my probabilities for now I changed them a bit this was 30 to 40 percent probabilities that we would see a new low around the 29k I changed that during the weekend to 25 percent probabilities that we could see a new low around 29k or to revisit the 30k level so let's see what happens I am now diminishing my probabilities of seeing a new low according to the MRI indicator and also the price structure that you guys can see on the chart showing that we could be bottoming right now. So let's see how this going up evolves or if we are just going sideways because it's possible we continue sideways for a few more weeks just going back to uh, 32, 33k to the 40k area so just going in between up and down up and down for a few more weeks but however the price structure for now looks very good for a reversal of the price action i would not like to have a flash reversal uh, reversal of the price action going to the upside immediately to new all-time highs because usually when that happens it doesn't have the strength necessary to keep the price action up there so I would much more prefer to have some kind of consolidation for a few more weeks and then going slowly to the upside showing some strength from that accumulation that would be the perfect scenario for a price reversal here and that that uh, is what I would like to happen on the Bitcoin charts so that's it for the weekly chart. Let's take a look at the RSI. Nothing to say here. It's going sideways. The MACD is showing some signs of a curve. So the MACD continues to be bearish. But look what happens to the bars. So we had a lot of distance from this bar to this one, then a shorter distance to this one, and now it's even shorter. So this means that the momentum for the bears is ending the bears are ending uh, their momentum they are completely exhausted uh, all the sales they could have so now it's the time for some accumulation or some price reversal to the upside at least for the short term so the macd is a very good indication of when the momentum is ending and you guys can see now that the bars are not increasing so much uh, as compared to the previous one so this is also uh, it's still bearish it's still red the blue line is still below the orange but at least we can see the momentum ending and it's not gaining some strength to the bearish side 
Uh, so let's take a look at the daily chart. So the daily chart shows already some accumulation. You guys can see that we have been going up and down. We are now ending a one to four candle correction from that previous high, that swing high there with the green star. And now we are, since this morning, we have been going up slowly and steadily going up. And let's see if we can at least at least try to break the resistance that comes from this trend line here. That's my second trend line that was plotted in the end of uh, 2020 and still remains a very good indication uh, for the price action on the daily and the weekly. Uh, the volume has been coming down again. So this is, um, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Uh, it's not so good that the volume continues to go down after some critical moments, but that's what we have. So there's nothing to say there. Okay, this the RSI on the daily is going up, of course, and the MACD is also crossing. So guys, this is the crossover on the daily. The blue line is now above the orange line, and that is a very good indication. If you guys can see, there's a hair of the blue line there up uh, just above the orange line. This is a good indication for the blue it means the momentum is coming to an end, as I said on the weekly chart. Okay, so let's take a look at the four hour just so that we can see also the BitMEX funding rate. So let's start with the charts. Uh, we have been going sideways since we broke this ranging channel coming to the downside. So there's up and down, up and down momentum. That's it. Uh, nothing really crazy. We are just accumulating. The four hour chart shows exactly what I've been saying. This accumulation period is very good. As you can also see by the volume per level of price uh, shows. We also have been having a lot of accumulation in this area going from the 32 to the 40. 41. This has been a very good accumulation area and the four hour chart doesn't give me any big indication that we are uh, having a price reversal or just accumulation. So there's no point discussing it too much. This candle is now fighting for this resistance of the 50 period SMA and that's it. The RSI is just pointing up on the four hour two. The MACD is bullish on the four hour. So we have been uh, having a good momentum since this morning for the bulls and the BitMEX funding rate, which I will just check now is completely neutral. So there is no funding. There is zero, zero funding. The premium is negative and zero funding. At least not zero completely, but it's 0 0.0005. So this is, this is the same as zero. Uh, so there is no movement on the leverage exchanges and at least BitMEX, which is the biggest one in terms of volume for leverage. Um, so the BitMEX funding rate shows us that nothing is happening, just consolidation. And of course, when consolidation occurs, any leverage trader knows that it doesn't compensate to be in the market with any positions because you have to pay the interest for those positions. And in this case, you have to pay for nothing because there is no volatility. So you will not get any gains or losses just paying interest all the time. There's no point being in leverage right now. So that's for hour. And let me just confirm in the one hour that the BitMEX funding rate is zero or close to it. Yes, it is just a bit higher than that in the last hour, but it's not even on the two digits, two decimal digits. It's on the third. So there's no point discussing it. Uh, on the one hour, however, we had this uh, MRI warning on the top, but we reset the next candle. So we are now starting a new count on the hourly with this green candle here going to the upside and just fighting the resistance around the 37K. So 37 to 40K, the resistance that we had for some time already, as you guys can see here and you guys can see here and here and there. So one, two, three, four points of resistance that we're trying that we that Bitcoin was trying to break to the upside and still wasn't able to do it. So let's see how that evolves. Okay, going quickly to the pro indicators framework, we have been sustaining the price action here at the breakout level. Uh, so it was good. We are now on top of the trend channel. So this is the resistance uh, showed in a different way. You guys know already the pro indicators is one of my main indicators here. So as you guys know, the trend channel, which is the red zigzag coming down here and the green zigzag stabilizing down here uh, is the channel that is most probable to happen for this time frame. We 
we are in the four hours of course in pro indicators and this line drawn by the indicator was the breakout line to the downside which held the price like a um like uh, like a what uh, like <laughs> a very strong soldier here so it held the price twice and sent it back up to find the top of the trend channel uh, this is a good indication that the price will at least uh, that's why I also reduced my my probability of the price going to new lows to 29k because I saw the uh, pro indicators uh, uh, holding the price. I saw the MRI indicating the reversal for this week or next week. So that's why I reduced my probabilities to 25%. Also, you guys see that we have the strong support uh, strong support for the price action here in the context the support context this gray box down here and we have the resistance the big resistance for this uh, context here up there around the 50k 50 something k so so far we have been holding the line there on top of the trend channel it's possible the trend channel and the resistance that we discussed already in the mri charts will send the price back down but i don't believe that we will break this uh, area of the 33k and we will continue to range in the uh, so the biggest probability is that we will continue to range until we can find a way to break those resistances around the 40k area so that's it for the pro indicators let me just take a look at the dollar because i thought i saw something good so the dollar is going back down again and that's good in my book because the dollar uh, weakening makes bitcoin stronger and let's see if we can break this support and go below the 89 level on the dixie the dxy index for the dollar let's see if we can go down there and break this fucking thing once and for all and finally have the dollar below 89 which will be a great thing for bitcoin that's it for the dollar let's check gold and gold as as predicted like uh, you guys know already what i'm doing here as predicted so we have an mri top and as i said this chart is indexed for the gold chart is much more accurate on the mri and we finished this week with an mri top and now the candle is starting red so probably we will revisit the 1847 level which is the 20 week uh, the 20 week sma for gold so we could see a one to four candle correction after this mri top as tonvez will tell you for sure and as it is written on the um on the you know indications for this this uh, indicator on the manual sorry i wanted to say the manual so the manual for this uh, indicator says that probably when you reach a top an indication of top which is the red uh, arrow or the green arrow if this is uh, an mri bottom we could have a one to four candle correction so that's what i'm expecting for gold because i trust the mri and i trust this indicator so the rsa uh, rsi is just going sideways sometimes you have to forgive me guys because i'm trying to speak so fast that i you, you know uh doing this in english it's not easy but anyway the rsi is going sideways not even going to overbought territory so the macd is also uh, uh now turning uh, the lines are going above the zero line here at the bars and we are already in the fifth green bar so we had this uh slow going up for gold but now we are on the mri top and i'm expecting some kind of a retracement so let's see what the blue line does if it goes below the orange which i doubt if this is only one to four candle correction i doubt that the blue line will go below the orange but we could see a loss in momentum just the same way we saw the momentum for the bears ending in bitcoin on the weekly chart we could see exactly the same here for gold so the bars are not stretching so much as the ones before and we could see some momentum being lost here for the bulls which could indicate a one to four candle correction but we need a few more weeks to see what's going to happen i would take profits anyway this is my personal opinion that's what i would do if i was invested in gold which i'm not but if i was i would take some profits now at this level and if the mri is mistaken i could just get back in again uh, if i see that the price structure is continuing to the upside 
So that's it for gold. Let's take a look at the SMP. SMP continues to be exactly the same. The same old crap, no need to discuss this. So let's go directly to the part where I wanted to show you guys where I disagree with Benjamin Cohen. It doesn't mean I don't respect the guy. I respect Benjamin Cohen. He has a lot of subs. He has a lot of people following him. Of course, he knows his stuff. And for the first time after watching him for so long, for the first time, I disagree with his opinion. That's it. I disagree with his opinion. I'm not saying that he's stupid or he's, uh, he doesn't know what he's doing or something like that. And I hope he, if he has the opportunity to watch this video, I hope he watches this video and he has the, uh, uh, he becomes so open-minded about what I'm saying here that he actually could uh, consider that what he said before is not so right and probably what I'm saying now could be a bit more right than what he said. But I don't agree that we are in a bear market. Being this a short-term, long-term, mid-term, whatever term he wants, I don't agree this is a bear market. And I'm going to explain why. So this is a uh, Bitcoin price action since on the daily chart since, uh, let's see here, since November 2018. So this dashed line there, the vertical one is around November 2018. And this is where we are now. Now you guys tell me if you think this is a bear market by any means. So <clears throat> let's suppose that we didn't go there yet. And the, 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 so after the big drop of uh, the beginning of December that we reached around 3K um, on the Bitcoin price and we start to go up and we have this up and down and accumulation area. So this is a big accumulation area that, by the way, I think it's very, very likely that we are going to see the same thing here on we are, uh, uh, exactly at the price level where we are now. We are going to see something very, very like this one. And this was about 14 weeks. This is from that point, the low point there to this point here before the breakout, it was 14 weeks of accumulation. So I would not be surprised if we have 14 weeks of accumulation now at the current price level before we have a final breakout to the upside to new all time highs. I don't see why that would be crazy or stupid or, or bad for the market. That would be in fact great for the market because big accumulation means big strength to the upside and everyone knows that. So, but what I was trying to say here is why I disagree with Benjamin Cohen and this is why. So I, and, and you don't need a lot of TA for that. You don't need a lot of lines and triangles and indicators. You just need to look at the price action, draw the trend lines, which are in fact what defines a market. If this is a bull market or a bear market, you need a trend line because the trend line indicates where the market is going up or down for a prolonged time uh, in, in, you know, in the time scale. So you cannot say there is a bear market or a, or a bull market because of two or three weeks of price action. It's impossible. Every good trader knows that you can only define a bear market or a bull market after weeks and weeks, if not months and years of that market going in the same direction. So I just plotted this first trend line here after the minimum price of 3k in December 2018 and then I plotted the trend line and the trend line if you guys continue to see except for this yellow circle here which is a very special circumstance because this is when COVID exploded in the news so this is a rare exception when you have a trend and if you have a trend and you ignore for now when you plot the line if you ignore that exception so pretend it never existed and you see the market continues in the same uptrend not going exponentially up but it's the same uptrend so you can plot the line this way so the line is plotted and now you see that there's an exception which is the yellow circle but still if you Put your hand on top of the chart and you cover everything from the yellow circle to the right, 
you will think, okay, this is exactly what we are living right now, what we are experiencing in this actual, the current price action of Bitcoin. But as you guys can see, that was the exception and that was not a bear market. What's inside this yellow circle is not a bear market. This was uh, FUD because of the COVID news all over the world. And then it, make this, it made this big drop and then it got back into the exactly same trend line that we were before, showing that this was uh, already a bull market since that low of December 2018. So this is the trend line that defines that this is a bull market. If the trend line was going down and the, the trend line was on top of the price action, then this would be a bear market. But it's not. This is the trend line that supported the price action for years after 2018, December 2018, low of 3K. And it has been supporting the price action until here, around October 2020, before the exponential breakout of Bitcoin price to the upside, and then finally the breakout of the all-time high, the previous all-time high of 2017, around the 20K. So what did I do? This is the trend line that has been holding the price, with the exception of the FUD provoked by COVID. So what do I do? I, I plot a new trend line as soon as we see that the market exploded to the upside in a much more steep curve so uh, steep inclination in this case so you guys can see that all this trend line goes in this direction and then you have a moment in time when the market goes exponentially to the upside and then you can plot a new line a new trend line and that trend line for some miracle that everyone thinks that because I plotted a trend line, I'm the biggest genius on earth. No, many people already uh, plotted this trend line. Being them, uh, Hygin Lee was one of the first guys saying that everyone is crazy if they think we are in a bear market. And he showed this trend line too. I had it just a few days after and then I confirmed with Hygin Lee that he has the same trend line. And what happens is if you plot this line from the bottom of the COVID FUD, and you touch exactly the moment where we have the exponential break of the, of the bull market, and then you continue up with the same trend line, and you will see that this retracement we had of 50% was exactly stopped by that trend line. Miracle? No, there are no miracles in technical analysis. There are no miracles. Technical analysis shows you how the people think because this reflects the psychology of the market. It's not a prediction tool, it's a reflection tool of what people are doing in the market, which shows in the price action and then in the patterns that we find for that price action. That's technical analysis. This is not some uh, crystal ball where I see the future. No, it's not. I just analyze the past to have an idea of what the future could be, what probabilities we have for a determined outcome. That's it, that's technical analysis. No one is trying to predict the future because if you are watching some trader or some analyst that gives you the future, he is lying because no one can predict the future. We can, however, see the different outcomes possible from that price structure and those patterns and give probabilities of what's going to happen. That's it. So in my, in my second trend line here, the only thing I'm doing is I'm plotting the trend for a new steeper uh, exponential bull market. Because when we exploded to the upside around here, around October last year, of course, the trend line increased to the upside. The inclination of the trend line increased. So I started to plot from the bottom of the FUD. I touched the next area of this bull market and then continued the line up. And then behold, that the 50% retracement we had goes exactly to that trend line. So now tell me, is this a miracle? No, this is not a miracle. This is just a pattern analysis. And this shows, this second trend line here shows that we are still in a bull market because I see the prices going up. 
I see a retracement, which is perfectly normal. We had several in the 2017 bull cycle. Many of them were above 20%. We had at least one of 40% or 40 something percent. And we had another one almost 40%. And we had like in total five retracements like this. Of course, the scale was smaller because the all-time high was on, on 20,000. So the, the, the corrections to that all-time high had to be smaller too. No, I'm not talking percentage-wise. I'm talking uh, um, absolute values-wise. So, of course, a retracement of 50% now, it's much bigger in dollar terms than it was in 2017. So that's why people are scared because they saw $30,000 lost in 50% retracement. But this is not so much bigger than the 40-something retracements we had in the past. And the trend line still remains. It has not been broken. And the worst part of that is even if this trend line is broken, like it was here inside the yellow circle, we can still get above the trend line again. So now tell me, where can I plot a bear market trend line here? I can't because there are not enough data points to do it. So this is not a bear market yet. I'm not saying that it couldn't be in one or two or three months. I'm saying that now it's not a bear market. And this is where I disagree with Benjamin Cohen. And again, I'm not saying that he's stupid or he doesn't know how to analyze charts. I'm just saying that his metrics, the metrics that he used to say that we are in a short term bear market are wrong. That's it. I watch the guy, I subscribe the guy, I watch his channel. Every time he publishes a new video, I watch it because, of course, I respect him and I value his opinion. And now I disagree with his opinion and that's it. Nothing else. In my opinion, you guys are watching the charts here in front of you. We have two bull, bullish, two bullish trend lines and the last one is even going even more up than the previous one. So for me, even if we break this trend line to the downside and come back to 20K, we could even come back to the, the previous all-time high. And if we have a V-shaped recovery or even a consolidation that will take a few weeks and take us back to the upside, to the upper side of this trend line, and then the market continues to go that way, this is still a bull market. That's only my opinion based on facts, based on the chart and trend lines. And that's it, guys. This is what I wanted to share with you. So let me stop screen share. Go back to the screen. Uh, we had a longer video today because of all the, all, the, you know, all the tweets and all the stuff that was circulating for a few days already because of this... Um, uh, you know, some people just like to uh, make things, little things or disagreements in opinions like big wars and big quarrels. And there's nothing like that. This is just my opinion based on the charts, based on trend lines, because trend lines are what make the bull or the bear market. That's what defines a bear or a bull market. And you cannot have a trend line without months weeks, months, and years of data to, in fact, be able to say this was a bear market. In fact, I would go even further. You cannot say this is a bear market ever. You cannot say it. You can always say, you can only say this was a bull market or this was a bear market. After many, many, many weeks or months or even years of having a trend and only with a trend you can say if this is a bull or a bear market. So that's it for today. Okay, guys. Um, I hope that the, the explanation was good enough for you guys. Um, I'm not going even to respond to those prima donnas in the Facebook groups that believe that I'm arrogant just because I don't speak Portuguese to them. Uh, so that's, <laughs> that's even beyond my comprehension. So I'm not going there. I'm just going to leave you guys today with this video. I'm sorry for being a longer video than normal uh, because usually it's uh, like 
18, 15 to 20 minutes video, sometimes just uh, 21 or 22 because I have something else to say. But today we ha I, I felt the need to explain to everyone that I don't think anyone is stupid. I'm just uh, giving a different opinion based on what I believe defines a bull or bear market. And that's it. So guys, I will leave you uh, right now with the wise words as usual, the wise words of Sarge Esterhaus of the Hill Street Police Department. And you guys know already I love it. So let's, what, uh, let's hear his advice. All right, let's roll. Hey, let's be careful out there. And there you go, guys. Let's roll and be really careful out there because the markets are not for unexperienced people right now. So uh, let me just finish this and prepare everything by saying, if you enjoy this content and if you believe that I'm here to help you be a better trader or a better investor in these markets, gently touch the like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new and share it with your friends so that other people can also see different opinions and not all just the same opinions okay so guys i enjoyed really much doing this video for you i hope to see you on the next one which will be tomorrow if everything goes okay bye bye <laughs>